So you want to be the strongest guy in your gym. The strongest guy in your gym has the heaviest squat, heaviest bench, heaviest deadlift. So what do you do? You realize that oh, that combination is powerlifting. So you go on Google, trusty Google device, and you say best powerlifting program because you want to be streamlined. You want to go and you want to be the strongest guy in your gym based on your program that's going to get you to that point. You want to achieve that goal. Well, you come up and you get hundreds of results, hundreds of different programs. You get Juggernaut, you get Smolov, you get Shiko, you got Fit Set, you got 531, you got to, there are so many results, all of them showing data and athletes as examples of people that this program has worked with. And you say, okay, well, that's a little confusing. Let's, let's move on to the next thing. Powerlifters have a notorious diet. Let's see what I actually have to eat to be a powerlifter. You Google powerlifting and congratulations, you have stumbled upon the most controversial topic in strength sports and nutrition. What do powerlifters eat? Do you just eat everything that you lay your eyes on? Do you have a structured diet, kind of like a bodybuilder's, but more? Are you allowed to eat oils? Do you eat beef? Do you eat rice? Do you eat chicken? Do you eat potatoes, sweet potatoes, veggies? Anything that can go into your mouth hole. Solid foods, liquid foods. Are protein shakes actually worth it? Well, now you don't really know what to do. You ask these questions, you came out with more questions. So where do you go from there? The thing is, powerlifting is almost entirely based on empirical data, meaning there's not that much science or theory behind everything that goes on on the platform under the bar. It's just based on observations of what top lifters have seen, the progressions that top lifters have used to avoid injury, and a lot of the things that lifters and coaches have implemented that have shown success. However, there are so many variables out there. There's genetic factors that factor in. There's the dietary factors that go into it, the athletic factors, the leverages, the rate of injury, the age, the background of the lifter. So many things go into whether or not a program is going to work. What is your work capacity? How do you work towards increasing your work capacity without losing gains or, or, or whatever is going to impede your progress? What's the fastest way to gain strength? What's the slowest way to gain strength, but healthily? Health factors going into this. There, there's so many factors in it, and it's all based on empirical data, observations from lifters and coaches. Now, that's not to say that there is absolutely no science in powerlifting. In an event known to everyone except for historians as the world's biggest dick measuring match, the Cold War, the Russians decided to flex on the entire world and just ensure that their athletes would come in first place, get the gold medal, and rack up those number one accolades at the Olympics. So instead, they decided that cancer and, and like other scientific endeavors were just problems for future world. And they zoned in on the athletic performance of their champion level athletes. This was headed by a scientist whose last name was Prolepin. I don't know his first name, but he produced the Prolepin's chart. Basically, he looked at these champion level athletes and saw what percentages they were using, what rep schemes they were using, and how many sets they were doing with those reps, and developed a template that would ensure that there would be progress going on pretty much at all times throughout training. If you follow the Prolepin's chart, you're gonna develop good progress. And you know, what more do you want in powerlifting than progress? And that's the thing, the Prolepin's chart is out there and all those Google searches, those those things that pop up, the Juggernaut, uh, I believe 531, 1020 life, fifth set. All of these are based on findings that they found in the Prolepin's chart. So they take the ideas of the Prolepin's chart and then they break it down so that people like, they dummy proof it so that you're guaranteed to get make progress with this program. They flesh it out so that okay, you you do the you do the main work and then you also do accessories and then they they outline what the accessories are going to look like. Bada bing, bada boom, you're making progress. The program works. Food, on the other hand, is a whole different story because unlike the programming and and the reps, unlike the programming side of powerlifting, the food part is more than just bro science and communism science. Athletes professional athletes, NFL players, NHL players, and 
whatever whatever sport activity you subscribe to there is a ton of information on the perfect amount of food the perfect macros the perfect ratio of food there is so much food science gone into those athletes it is almost like they're genetically not genetically but they're they're synthetically optimized by their food choices because doctors, dietitians, chefs are preparing their foods, their meals, and they're getting the perfect food every single time they go out because they need to perform at an, a peak level because there's millions and millions of dollars on the line. They're not in charge of what they're eating anymore. The, the nerds with the glasses are. So when it comes to powerlifting, a lot of people came to powerlifting because powerlifting subscribed to fat equals strong. So people just assumed you eat more, you're gonna get strong. You get fat, you're gonna be strong, but that's not true. You, you're not gonna grow your bench by eating cake every night. You're, got, you're not gonna increase your squat much by eating ice cream with your cereal every morning. There's actually a lot of data and professional dietitians who have degrees and more than just experience and bro science their way into the field of sports nutrition. That will dictate what prime foods, what macros, what what is good, what is beef good, rice good, everything like that. Heck, even bodybuilding, which is professional dieting, if you, if you think about it like that. Professional dieting, they have to perform, they have to optimize the amount of food that they're eating to prevent the loss of muscle. So there's a lot of data and science going into the food, going into bodybuilders' bodies so that they can win, so that they can get down to 2% body fat to step on the on the, on the the stage and not pass out and be able to perform. Yeah, they're, they're at their least optimal, uh, they're at their weakest when they're when they're on the stage, but the diet that they've gone through has optimized the amount of muscle retention they go through during a cut. What you want as a power lifter is the food to enter your body and be optimal, optimally used. It's not really overthinking anything. It's beef and rice, chicken and rice, stocks, chicken stock, beef stock, bone broth, sweet potatoes, white potatoes. The easiest breakdown is actually the vertical diet. If you eat fermented dairies, if you eat beef, rice, potatoes, get all your micronutrients in, you're going to be stronger for it. It's not that difficult. It's just the missionary position of eating because yeah, it's boring, but you're going to get your nut. And that's what I'm getting at with this video. Sometimes the, sometimes we get so bogged down on what's optimal, what works the best, what's the best. We, we lose track of what we're trying to do. And if you're trying to get your nut, the best way to do that is just missionary position. Squat, increase your squat. Bench, increase your bench. Deadlift to increase your deadlift. Follow the prolepins chart. Damn, even food isn't that difficult. You eat beef, rice, chicken. As long as you get your protein in, as long as you get your carbs in, you're nutritionally balanced and you get everything that you need to sustain yourself, you're gonna get stronger. This shit works. Don't overcomplicate it. Just because you saw someone do it on your phone doesn't mean that it's it's gonna work for you. There's a lot of genetic factors in it and the, the, the missionary position gets rid of all those variables and it's gonna work. So, so just, just do the missionary position.